Hi, my name is Oksana Kravtsova. In this presentation, we will consider how to use Docker, Jenkins, and Rancher. So we will consider what is Docker, Jenkins, Ranchers, and what are they used for, how are they used together, how to deploy my team project using Docker, Jenkins, and Rancher, and how to use these tools with GitHub. First, let's talk about Docker. What is Docker and what is it used for? Docker was first released in 2013 and is developed by Docker Incorporation. This is an open platform that helps with the universal distribution of applications. It has become a standard for certain types of container virtualization systems and has been adopted by various companies as a fair container strategy. So what is Docker? Docker is a computer program that performs operating system level virtualization. The tool is designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications by using containers. Containers allow a developer to package up an application with all of the parts it needs, such as libraries and other dependencies, and ship it all out as one package. Docker was created to work on the Linux platform, but has extended to offer greater support for non-Linux operating systems, including Microsoft Windows and Apple OS X. Versions of Docker for Amazon Web Services, AWS, and Microsoft Azure are available. Docker consists of three components that are software, objects, and registries. Saying about software, we should consider the Docker daemon. It's called Docker. This is a persistent process that manages Docker containers and handles containers' objects. The Docker daemon is a service that runs on your host operating system. The Docker daemon itself exposes a REST API. The next component is object. The main classes of Docker objects are images, containers, and services. Docker containers is standardized, encapsulated environment that runs applications. A container is managed using the Docker API and command line interface. Docker image is a read-only template used to build containers. Images are used to store and ship applications. And the last main class Docker service allows containers to be scaled across multiple Docker daemons. The result is known as a swarm, a set of cooperating daemons that communicates through the Docker API. The last component are registries. Docker registry is a repository for Docker images. Registries can be public and private. And Docker Hub is the largest public registry of Docker images that is also a default registry. The tools of Docker are Docker Compose and Docker Swarm. Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. It uses YAML files to configure as application services and performs the creating and startup process of all the containers with a single command. Docker Swarm provides native clustering functionality for Docker containers, which turns a group of Docker engines into a single virtual Docker engine. Here you see Docker architecture. As you see, Docker client is the primary way you will interact with Docker. When you use the Docker command line interface, you type a command into your terminal that starts with Docker. Docker client then uses the Docker API to send the command to the Docker daemon. Docker da daemon is the Docker server that listens for Docker API requests. The Docker daemon manages images, containers, networks, and volumes. A Docker registry is a remote location where Docker images are stored. You push images to a registry and pull images from a registry. You can host your own registry or use the provider's registry. For example, AWS and Google Cloud have registries. Now let's take a look at the diagram to understand virtual machines and containers concepts. For example, we need to host the application. However, this, this application may only have an approximated size of 300 megabytes to start with. 
So why would we want a virtual machine, which is virtualized at environment resulted from virtualization that has a size of one gigabyte plus when our application is much, much less than that? That is where the concept of containers comes in to, in to fix that. Docker does it in the following way. Instead of hosting each operating system per, per each application, some common resources can be shared, and there is something called a Docker engine, which sits on top of an operating system as shown on this diagram. As you can see on this diagram, you can visually observe how the application number became much less with the use of a container. In one way, this is a very simple solution. Nothing more than introducing another layer between operating systems and applications to optimize resources usages and reduce the need for redundant operating systems. However, this is a breakthrough for application development because this level of abstraction is exactly what enterprise companies and individual developers needed. Less has to provision giant virtual machines, but only get minimum containers essential to host their applications. As a result from adopting Docker or container is that application can be deployed or undeployed faster, start and stop faster, change to another image faster, process and do many things faster. The second question we are going to consider too is what is Jenkins and what is it used for? Continuous integration is the most important part of DevOps that is used to integrate various DevOps stages. Jenkins is the most famous continuous integration tool. Jenkins is an open source automation tool right in Java with plugins built for continuous integration purpose. Jenkins is used to build and test your software project, continuously making it easier for developers to integrate changes to the project and making it easier for users to obtain a fresh build. It also allows you to continuously deliver your software by integrating with a large number of testing and deployment technologies. With Jenkins, organization can accelerate the software development process through automation. Jenkins integrates development lifecycle processes of all kinds, including build, document, test, package, stage, deploy, static analysis, and much more. Jenkins achieves continuous integration with the help of plugins. Plugins allow to integration of various DevOps stages. If you want to integrate a particular tool, you need to install the plugins for the tool. For example, Git, Maven 2 Project, Amazon EC2, HTML, Publisher, etc. This image depicts that Jenkins is integrating various DevOps stages. On the diagram, you can see continuous integration with Jenkins. A Jenkins tool is here used in continuous integration, which allows code to build, deployed, and tested automatically. So why is Jenkins? Let's see advantages of Jenkins. Jenkins is an open source tool with much support from its community. Installation is easier. It has more than 1,000 plugins to make the work easier. It is easy to create new Jenkins plugin if one is not available. It is a tool which is right in Java, hence it can be portable to almost all major platforms. In the third question of our presentation, let's talk about Rancher. What is Rancher and what is it used for? Rancher is an open source software platform that implements a purpose-built infrastructure for running containers in production. Docker containers, as an increasingly popular application workload, create new requirements in infrastructure services, such as networking, storage, load balancer, security, service discovery, and resource management. A Rancher can be easily installed on any machine capable of running Docker. Once installed, all the subsequent nodes can be easily provisioned from the web UI, and with a few clicks, complex features such as load balancing are available out of the box. And now let's consider key features for Rancher. Uh, there are cross-host networking. A Rancher creates a private software defined network for each environment, allowing secure communication between containers across hosts and clouds. Container load balancing. A Rancher provides an integrated elastic load balancing service to distribute traffic between containers or services. 
and the load balancing service works across multiple clouds. Persistent storage services. Arrange supports orchestrating persistent storage services for Docker, making it possible for developers to deploy storage reliably in conjunction with containerized applications. The new feature builds on Docker 1.9 a volume plugin capabilities and makes it easier for developers to run applications that require a stateful database and persistent storage. Service discovery. A rancher implements a distributed DNS-based service discovery functions with integrated health checking that allows containers to automatically register themselves as services, as well as services to dynamically discover each other over the network. Service upgrades. A rancher makes it easy for users to upgrade existing container services by allowing service cloning and redirection of service requests. This makes it possible to ensure services can be validated against their dependencies before the traffic is directed to the newly upgraded services. Resource management. A rancher support documentation, a powerful tool for provisioning hosts directly from cloud providers. A rancher then monitors host resources and manages container deployment. Multi-tenancy and user management. A rancher is designed for multiple users and allows organization to collaborate throughout the application lifecycle. By connecting with existing directory services, a rancher allows users to create separate development, testing, and production environments and invites their peers to collaboratively manage resources and applications. Multi-orchestration engines. A rancher supports the ability for users to select the default cattle, Kubernetes, uh, or Docker Swarm as a container orchestration engine of choice when creating environments. And this will allow users to select market-leading scheduling frameworks while still leveraging rancher features such as the application catalog, enterprise user management, container networking, and storage technologies. Now, when we know about Docker, Jenkins, and Ranchers, let's go to the practice. In this section, the presentation will cover three questions at once. How are they used together? How to deploy my team project using Docker, Jenkins, and Rancher? And how to use these tools with GitHub? So, to clearly understand how GitHub, Docker, Jenkins, and Rancher used together, I'm going to demonstrate you my team project. Here you see Docker file. If you see the first line, you will see that we use node version 8. In line 11, you can see that npm install means to install packages. And please see line 18. It means that we expose port 5000 for our application. And in, line, in the line 20, you can see that when we start container, we run npm run start. And then let's open Jensen file in our application. Here, please see line 8. And you will see that we use file client to authorize and connect smart by application. When we run npm start in Docker, we actually run command as a shot in line 15 and set port 5000 and run React script start. Now let's check Docker Compose YML file. Here we can see that we expose internal port 5000 from React Web Server to external port also 5000. So our project DNS record URL showed on this slide can point to port 5000. Okay, let's open Jenkins file. Uh, please see line 11. Here you can see that we deploy Docker container to Georgia attached build server with stack latest. And then I propose to take a look at line 24. Here you can find two URLs. The first URL is rancher hdapgatech 
EDU v2 beta, and the second one is build HDAP get HDU UTA patient UI latest. So we notify Ranch server on the first URL that we have new Jenkins build and Rancher should take Docker image from the second URL and register service with name UPRMM slash web. So basically our project DNS point to UPRMM slash web container on Rancher to the port 5000. Uh, now let's open our Jenkins. To integrate Jenkins and GitHub, we need to go open setting in our GitHub repository. Go to webhook and set up Jenkins URL. This was done for our internal mentor. So after each commit in GitHub, it notified Jenkins that there is a new commit. And Jenkins builds this commit using Jenkins file showed previously. Here you can see that after each commit on GitHub, Jenkins builds our application. Uh, then let's open the latest build number 69 and see it on the next slide. Here on the step deploy, you can see that Jenkins checks out our application from GitHub, and then builds image, and then gives image tag, and on the last step, it pushes our image to Georgia.h image storage. Uh, then on this step, we notify Rancher that we have a new Docker image. Now let's open Rancher, go to infrastructure host and find out application UPRMM. Also, we can check logs of our application by clicking view logs. Here you can see that we actually start our command from package.json file. And this is our local web server on port 5000, maps to external port 5000 as well. In the end of the presentation, you can see resources that were used in this presentation. And thank you for your attention.